वेलकम गुड मॉर्निंग यू आर वॉचिंग मार्केट कैफे ऑन ई टी नाउ विच मीस नेशा विच मी इज विनी मोती वाला एंड वेरी आई डोंट नो यू आर अवेक लेट लास्ट नाइट वॉचिंग ऑल द ट्रैवल इन एक्शन बिकॉज वेर वॉज द मोस्ट अवेटेड राइट एवरी वन आर सो एक्साइटेड ऑल आईज एक्चुअली अक्रॉस इट but pretty much excited about getting that silver or gold you yes. know that i was on that one so Absolutely. clearly waiting for it hopes were all pinned to neera chopra yesterday and india's olympic contingent had a historic day last evening because neera chopra won silver in the javelin throwing um 1.87 meters more than his gold medal winning distance in tokyo but was edged out by pakistan's arshad nadeem's olympic record meanwhile the indian men's hockey team claimed their second consecutive bronze beating spain 2 one giving pr shrijesh a fairy tale finish to his career and aman serawat is one win away from a medal in wrestling after storming into the semis he is now in line for a bronze medal india's medal tally now stands at 5 Well the Indian men's hockey had a close fight with the Spaniards and have triumphed uh, eventually to pick up bronze at the Paris Olympics. India defeated Spain 2-1 in the men's hockey bronze medal patch match at Paris. Remember this is India's consecutive bronze medal. Okay. and let's uh, go close to times that work uh, karishma singh who caught up with the star after his stellar win uh, let's go across and listen into uh, neera chopra what he has to say his excitement after the win apne desh ke liye jab bhi medal jeette hain to khushi hoti hai aur bilkul definitely aap puchoge ki tokyo mein aur yahan pe experience alag hai wahan pe mauka mila tha apna rashtra gaan bajwane ka aur आज वो नहीं हो पाया तो पर फिर भी वही जैसा कि मैं बता रहा था कि स्पोर्ट्स में अप डाउन होता है और जो भी रिजल्ट होता है हमको एक्सेप्ट करके अगले कंपटीशन पे उस पर ध्यान देना चाहिए जो भी रिजल्ट है अपनी कंट्री के लिए मेडल जीता तो वो बहुत अच्छी बात है और जो कमी रही हैं उन पे काम करेंगे और थ्रो भी अच्छी रही है सीजन बेस्ट थ्रो थी और अभी करनी है और मेहनत भारत की जनता को इंडिया वर्सेस पाकिस्तान देखने में बहुत मजा आता है और आज जैवलिंग में भी वो हुआ अर्षद टॉप पर आप सेकंड तो थोड़ा अर्षद के बारे में बताइए आप लोगों का बॉन्ड भी बहुत स्ट्रांग है आज वो गोल्ड मेडल जीते हैं आप सिल्वर जीते हैं चलो भगवान की दया से आज जैसा वही मैं बोल रहा था कि आज अरसद का दिन था 2016 से मैं अरसद के साथ कंपटीशन खेल रहा हूं तो ऐसा पहली बार हुआ है कि अरसद के साथ कंपटीशन करके और अरसद जीता है तो आज बिल्कुल भगवान अरसद के साथ था और बस इंडिया वालों को यही बताना चाहता हूं कि बहुत मेहनत करेंगे आगे और जो शायद कुछ ना कुछ कमियाँ हैं या जो इंजरी है उनको ठीक करके आगे और अच्छा करेंगे All right, that's over. Coming in from javelin silver medalist Neera Chopra, let's also go across and listen into the Indian hockey team players on how their experience was on the ground, what they have to say about their terrific victory, and what's the sentiment like as of now in Paris for the Indian contingent. Let's listen in. बहुत अच्छा बाउंस बैक किया आफ्टर सीमिस के बाद और ये इसी मैच नहीं था स्पेन ने अपना बेस्ट दिया हर एक टाइम पे हमारे ऊपर आई मीन प्रेशर लगाया एंड मेरे हिसाब से द टीम डन अ वंडरफुल जॉब ऐसे टीम हम लोगों ने हर एक मौके को फेस किया एंड आखिर ऐसे टीम हम लोगों ने ब्रॉन्स मेडल जीता बहुत खुशी हो रही है बैक टू बैक मेडल जीतना कंट्री के लिए और ब्रॉन्ज जीता है बहुत खुशी की बात है क्योंकि हमारा मेन यही टारगेट था कि स्टेट सेमीफाइनल हम अच्छा खेल के आ रहे थे बट हमारा यही था कि लास्ट एक सीरीज के लिए हमने ये मैच खेलना था इंडिया के लिए खेलना था क्योंकि उनका लास्ट मैच था इस बार रिटायर कर रहे हैं वो हॉकी को तो हमारा मेन यही मकसद था उन, उनके लिए खेलना है तो आई थिंक हम वो मैच खेले हैं और जीते हैं बहुत खुशी की बात है हमने एज ए टीम जो खेला है मैं उसके लिए पूरे कोचिंग स्टाफ को सारे प्लेयर्स के कमिटमेंट को सबको धन्यवाद करना चाहूँगा मैं गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया का धन्यवाद करना चाहूँगा साई का टॉप्स का सबका कि उन्होंने वो फैसिलिटीज़ हमें दी हैं साई बेंगलोर में हमारा बेस है जहाँ पे कैंप लगता था क्योंकि सबका सबका कंट्रीब्यूशन रहा है भारत की हॉकी टीम पेरिस ओलंपिक्स में जिस तरीके से कांस्य पदक हासिल किया है ब्रॉन्ज मेडल हासिल किया है मैं अपनी ओर से और अपनी पार्टी की ओर से भारत की टीम को हार्दिक बधाई देता हूं। टीम ने जो असाधारण कौशल का प्रदर्शन किया है और जिस तरीके से लगन के साथ उन्होंने इस लड़ाई को लड़ा और इस खेल को जीता है 
सारा भारत उन पर गर्व कर रहा है मैं एक बार पुनः उनको बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूँ सबसे पहले तो मैं हॉकी टीम को बधाई देना चाहूँगा ये हमारे लिए चौथा ब्रॉन्ज मेडल है सभी हमारे प्लेयर को भी अभिनंदन करता हूँ हॉकी टीम को भी अभिनंदन करता हूँ Okay, that's all about, uh, uh, you know, the win coming in for uh, Paris Olympics and that's what we're keeping an eye out on. Uh, you know, uh, we will watch out for more updates coming in on that front. But let's move on and talk about what's happening uh, in the U.S. markets and how they managed to close. So, yes, Dow Jones, S&P 500, Nasdaq, all of them managing to see uh, good gains coming in in uh, last night's trade. Uh, Dow Jones up more than 1.7%, uh, S&P 500 up more than 2%, Nasdaq up more than uh, 2% almost 3% uptake that's come in for uh, Nasdaq. So yes, that's what we're watching out for. Uh, where the gains came in for the US markets, uh, stocks and industry sectors, you could say, was technology, healthcare and industrial. Those sectors actually managed to see very, very good gains and strong gains that came in on that front. Uh, other than that, for Dow Jones, Amgen Inc., that saw a gain of almost 3-4% in trade. We had Salesforce, which saw a gain of 3-4% in trade as well. While the worst performers came in from um, Walt Disney, which didn't do much in trade, keeping an eye on that, and Coca-Cola, also uh, not much, just a muted day of trade that came in for Coca-Cola. So yes, keeping an eye out on that. While um, in terms of um, Nasdaq, also a strong performance came in from that IT side, so keeping an eye out on that one. Uh, top performers for Nasdaq uh, were Sun uh, Sunshine Biopharma, we had Harrow Health, as well as uh, Digital Turbine, which managed to see good gains. So yes, all in all, US managed to see good gains coming in now stock uh, when you're looking at s p 500 futures as of now as well uh, remained a little unchanged because yesterday we've seen a very sharp run-up coming in indication coming in even for the nifty implied open gain of almost nine tenth of a percent but even yesterday it was a positive start then we gave up those gains a bit of an up and down that we saw in the indian markets where does it head today? That's what we're keeping an eye on because second half of the day, normally we've started seeing that bit of a fall coming in for the markets in the last few trading sessions. Does that happen for the Nifty today as well? Let's watch out for that. But S&P 500 futures near the flat line and um, everyone's keeping an eye out on what more updates we get on the global front. European markets, let's talk about that as well. Given that the read-through came in from the US market was a bit positive, European markets closed a bit earlier. DAX managed to close with gains of almost four tenths of a percent. FTSC was a bit uh, muted, a side bit of a negative decline. So we could call a European market as a mixed close that came in. All eyes on uh, the global front as well as Indian markets. As of now, Nifty implied open, inching towards that 1% marks me. Absolutely. With that, uh, let's also take a look at what's been happening in the world of commodities. Let's start by taking a look at what oil is up to and WTI as of now at $76.16 per barrel. So above that 75 mark. You have Brent also that is at 79.1, just below that $80 per barrel mark. So keep a close eye on uh, how these two, WTI as well as Brent, uh, which direction they go in uh, today. But let's also take a deeper look at what's been happening with the world of crude and oil. Now, US crude oil futures rose more than 1% uh, last night to top that $76 per barrel mark. Like I told you, two reasons for this. You have positive labor data uh, uh, that came in from the US. We'll be telling you about that as well. And that eased fear of any recession at least that is what one half of uh, or one school of thinking on Wall Street believes and the second reason that boosted oil prices yesterday was that Middle East tensions seem to be simmering yesterday we've not heard of any adverse developments at least coming in on uh, the Middle Eastern front and uh, you also have uh, WTI that uh, bounced back and recovered after crude inventories fell for a sixth straight week so that was something that worked out um, for oil and crude prices. Now the oil market is waiting to see whether Iran will follow through on its threat to strike Israel after the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Hani in Tehran last week. However, Iran has also said they do not um, wish to retaliate in a violent way. They will retaliate for sure but um, not by inciting any violence and they want to maintain peace in the area. At least that is what uh, Iran and Iran officials have said as of now. 
so lots to watch out for in fact you have uh, the gasoline september contract also is up almost 2% year to date remember gasoline is up 14% natural gas also as of now is uh, um, up uh, uh, 7/10th of a percent not much happening but year to date on the flip side natural gas is down 15 and a half percent so two other important metrics to watch out for and remember several international airlines have cancelled flights to israel as tensions in the region simmer so oil continues to be a story about political uh, geopolitical risk as of now and uh, that's basically everything that's been happening in the world of oil and crude let's quickly shift focus take a look at what gold is doing as of now and uh, rather flat in fact it has just inched into the positive territory but uh, very flat with a slight positive bias at 2463.8 dollars per ounce is where gold is as of now and uh, cryptocurrency well let me draw your attention uh, over there as well you have bitcoin that's up 12% as of now a 6600 dollar uptick coming in in bitcoin as of now just above that 60 just uh, near that 61500 dollars mark you have ether also that is up more than 13 and a half percent the 320 dollar uptick coming in on that front as well so well everything seems to uh, be cheerful this morning especially after the us handover that came in implied open also indicating the same let's just wait and watch what happens for our markets this morning mini Absolutely, but let's move on and talk about why the U.S. market was buzzing in trade today. We had the U.S. jobless claims data that came in for the week last week. It spooked the markets, and here's a relief coming in for Wall Street. Weekly jobless claims fell by two lakh thirty-three thousand, more than expected. A positive sign for uh, the labor market, and despite the concerns of the slowing economy. Now, uh, initial claims for unemployment totaled less than expected uh, last week, uh, countering other signs. that the labor market is weakening however the four week average is the highest that one has seen nearly in a year but at least some relief on a year on a weekly basis that we are seeing Well, on to some political news coming in from the U.S. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris have agreed to a September 10 debate on ABC News, with two more debates in the works. Trump proposed additional showdowns on Fox News and NBC News, saying, "I think it's very important to have debates." Harris also confirmed the date and expressed openness to having more debates. The first debate comes as Harris's campaign gains momentum in the polls and voter enthusiasm. A vice presidential debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Walz is also set. to be hosted by CBS News and the crowd strike outage saga seems to be far from over delta airlines uh, has revealed a 550 million dollar hit from last month's outage including a 380 million dollar revenue loss and 170 million dollars in expenses the airline suffered ma- uh, mass flight cancellations impacting 7000 flights and stranding thousands of customers Delta is pursuing legal action against CrowdStrike and Microsoft to recoup the costs. All right, let's take it across to China now because China's auto market has hit a milestone as electric vehicles and hybrids make up over 50% of the sales for the first time. EVs and plug-in hybrids sold 879,000 units despite a 2% drop in the overall car sales. This marks a significant mom- uh, moment for China's EV industry which continues to grow despite slowing demand globally and the government has introduced measures to boost consumption including increased subsidies for trading old cars for new ones and moving on uh, BMW is recalling over 100,000 vehicles in uh, US due to the starter uh, Star, uh, tar, uh, starter uh, motor issue uh, that can cause overheating and even lead to a fire. The recall affects several models, including uh, X5, X7, and 3 Series. However, the company has said that there is no major cause of concern, and uh, it is just a software update. Uh, owners will get notified in September about the update as well. Well, and on to some earnings as well as global corporate updates. Paramount Global is trimming its workforce by 15%. which is about 2000 jobs as it preps for a merger with Skydance Media. The media giant's revenue took a hit but its streaming division surprisingly turned a profit. Shares are up 5% as the company cuts costs and gears up for the merger. Okay, 
And let's move on. And Eli Lilly, uh, the, large, uh, the latest earnings report in a home run. The drug maker uh, sa uh, sales of diabetes drug and weight loss injections are soaring, uh, blowing past the expectations of the street. Uh, they are uh, hiking their revenue outlook by three uh, billion dollars, sending shares uh, higher by almost 10 percent in trade. The demand for these drugs sky is skyrocketing, and Eli Lilly uh, is. Uh, investing big into them to keep the production even as supply chain issues remain. Let's keep it going with earnings because Expedia's latest earnings report is taking off. The online travel agency beat profit expectations thanks to strong international travel demand. Shares soared after hours as well and CEO Aryan Gorin says the travel environment is healthy but warns of a softer demand in July. Expedia is forecasting steady growth but slightly lower than expected, a solid quarter coming in for the travel giant. And moving on to the update coming in uh, from our neighbouring country, Bangladesh's uh, Nobel Loretta, uh, banker of uh, the poorest of poor, Mohamed Yunus, is uh, now the head of interim government in Bangladesh. Uh, this is uh, in the wake of political crisis that saw former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina flee the country. Mohamed Yunus, uh, an em uh, emotional address, said, We have got independence for the second time and we must protect this. Yunus has been a critic of Hasina's 15 years of iron flustered rule. The economist and entrepreneur takes over the reins of the country after one uh, of the deadliest protests in the history. So big challenges lie ahead uh, as he has uh, to establish law and order, revive the economy and pave the way for free and fair elections. While uh, Mohammed, uh, will Mohamed Yunus be able to deliver this? Uh, what happens to Awami League uh, and what role does a uh, country's army have in this new Bangladesh? That's going to be the key. And we caught up uh, for this conversation with Professor uh, Madhav Das. Uh, 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 Nal Pat, the Director of um, Geopolitics and International Relations and uh, UNESCO Peace Chairperson at uh, Manipal University in India, listening to what he had to say. You need a lot of money to fight elections. Almost all that money is black money. You have to raise it from people who have black money. And these guys are not going to give it to you unless there's a quid pro quo. So the very comp uh, nature of the political system in Bangladesh uh, breeds corruption. So I'm not very confident about uh, the next government being free of corruption. What I need from uh, Mohammed Yunus is that he not give a bad name internationally to his reputation by tolerating corruption in the government. All right, let's talk about uh, the comments that came in from RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das yesterday. And one of the key takeaways was about delegated payments on UPI. To make the payments remotely uh, and uh, hassle-free, RBI recently proposed to introduce delegated payments in UPI. Now, this feature will allow an individual to make payments for another individual. To explain what the benefits of the new de delegated pay uh, payments facility can have, my colleague Asta Chopra is joining us on the show. Asta. Well, today was RBI's monetary policy and something interesting came up in the world of UPI. The RBI has suggested to introduce a delegated payments facility in the UPI. Now, what is a delegated payment system? In this payment system, one individual can allow the other individual to make the UPI payments. Now, what was declared in the RBI policy, we'll walk you through it. In RBI's governor monetary policy, the governor said that UPI has a larger user base of 400 24 million individuals. This is a potential for further expansioning the user base of the UPI. So it is proposed to introduce delegate payment, delegated payments in the UPI. So this system can uh, have two people use one bank account for making the UPI payments. So this is an interesting step taken by the RBI and RBI proposed this delegated payments to be used in the UPI payments. This product is expected to reach uh, across the country. The digital payments will be much much easier now how can this uh, delegated payments help 
well the first this delegated uh, payments can expand the user base of the UPI it can be in touch with the rural area especially to the people who doesn't use um, um, bank accounts as well secondly this method will strengthen and enhance the UPI payments especially in the rural areas as I stated before also this mechanism is far far easy safe and hassle-free and of course this contributing to digitally empowered nations so this UPI will be used by can be used by two people with having one bank account and the UPI payments can be really easy and this is an interesting way to spread the expansion of UPI across the country Rasta, thanks so much for joining us uh, with all of those details on delegated UPI payments. But on that note, we'll slip into a short breather on this edition of Market Cap. We will take a look at how the Asian markets have opened up when we return, so you stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Market Cafe on ET now. Let's put focus on two stocks we're going to talk about right now. Gujarat Gas as well as Apollo Tires. Now, there are some concerns coming in around for a Gujarat Gas in terms of inconsistency, in terms of volumes and margins. Is that a big concern for Gujarat Gas? What should we be watching out here? As well as for Apollo Tires in terms of performance that you're seeing versus peers has not been quite exciting. So, what is going to be happening? What are we watching out for both these stocks? Somit is joining in with us. Well, uh, Gujarat Gas and Apollo Tires have something in common and that is the dilemma that they are currently facing on margin versus volume. Now, for Gujarat Gas, if you see, we had seen a valuation re-rating happening because of consistent volume growth that we have been seeing, but that is now changing. Now, a street is concerned about the inconsistency that we are seeing when it comes to volume and margin. Now, management yesterday on the conference call said that given the fact that the current gas prices in the Morbi region are 4 rupees more expensive compared to its uh, competition, that is propane, uh, um, consumers are shifting back to propane and this is going to lead a drop of nearly 30 to 40 percent when it comes to uh, the volume number for Gujarat gas in the second quarter of FY25. Uh, apart from this, the company has also lowered its volume guidance to around 6 to 7 percent for the full financial year that is FY25 from 10 percent guidance given earlier. Also, the company's margins are expected to remain under pressure given the fact that uh, they are sourcing nearly 50 percent of their uh, gas from a spot market and in spot market gas prices are much more expensive compared to uh, the long term rates. Hence, the margin factor also for Gujarat gas could come under pressure going forward. Apollo Tires also is seeing similar kind of uh, pressure. Margins are expected to uh, fall much at a much faster pace. Now, in the last few quarters, if you see, Apollo Tires had seen a consistent growth in their margin numbers, but that is now expected to come down at a faster pace. And even the management has cautioned the street on margin pressure for the second quarter. Now, this is because rubber prices have increased to around 240 rupees per kg as against 189 rupees per kg that we had seen in the first quarter of FY25. Now, to pass on this increase in rubber prices, the management actually needs to take a price hike of anywhere between 7 to 8 odd percent, but the company has taken a price hike of only 3 odd percent because, because of this, there could be margin pressure for Apollo tyres as well. Now, another concern for Apollo tyres is the market share losses. Now, their revenue growth has been below its peers, which clearly indicates that the company has been losing market share and hence it cannot also increase uh, prices going forward. Hence, they are facing this dilemma of margin over market share. Now, we also understand that uh, MRF has started offering discounts on its product uh, to protect its market share though uh, so the road is going to be tough going forward more for Apollo tires given the fact that uh, they uh, can't even increase the prices despite the increase in raw material prices so keep an eye out for Apollo tires and Gujarat gas in trade. Alright, so Amit, thanks for joining us. Apollo Tires and Gujarat Gas, two stocks to watch out for in trade today. Let's also get in the brokerage view coming in for Gujarat Gas uh, this morning. UBS has maintained a neutral rating. Target has come in at 610 rupees. They are seeing some near-term headwinds for the Morbi volumes. They believe that will dip in quarter two of FY25. And they're also seeing uh, some ambitious plans coming in for the CNG segment as well. So this is uh, UBS's note coming in for Gujarat Gas. Uh, maintained a neutral rating. Target price at 610 for the stock. Okay, let's move on and talk about LIZ because that's in focus. Now, they have announced that they will be entering into the health insurance segment. And this is by way of buying majority stake in standalone health insurance company. Anurag Shah is joining in with us to give us those details. Anurag? So, LIC is planning to buy majority stake in presently available standalone health insurance company 
and uh, this year itself uh, LIC is planning to buy the majority stake and internally uh, the work is going on to buy uh, majority stake in presently available standalone uh, health insurer so presently in the country there are seven health insurance companies are there uh, out of seven there are uh, two, two insurers are recently started in the year 2024 only uh, they got the IRDA license to so five are uh, available on the neck and out of five uh, one uh, is a listed player uh, star health another one is a neva bupa they are planning into they are planning for the listing so then it remains to uh, the three uh, uh, standalone health insurance companies uh, because as per LIC uh, MD and CEO Siddharth Mohanty, uh, that composite license will be reality very soon because Insurance Act amendment uh, will make sure the insurance companies can venture into uh, health insurance, life insurance, or uh, standalone health insurance also. And because composite license uh, draft was uh, presented, and after the draft, it's likely to be reality in uh, upcoming. Uh, uh, session of the parliament so after that uh, it will be possible for insurance companies to offer all type of products uh, so for that only LIC as a LIC is planning to venture into health insurance and this year itself LIC will uh, buy a majority stake in a standalone health insurance company apart from that LIC MD and CEO Siddharth Mohanty has also mentioned that uh, LIC will uh, manage their real estate professionally because there are a uh, uh, couple of uh, uh, news going on about the monetization of LIC real stake which is of uh, approximately 50,000 crore to 1 lakh crore. So uh, there are 1,900 properties across the country uh, of LIC out of which 1,400 LIC operations are going on but there are uh, 500 uh, other properties also and a prime location properties. So LIC will uh, manage that uh, real estate professionally which will be valuable for uh, all stakeholders. Thank you so much uh, for that Anurag but let's move on and shift focus and talk about FMCG companies because seems like a fresh round of rise hikes is something that we are watching out for here. Now obviously when you're looking at the numbers as well some of the companies did highlight about you know possibility of a price hike depending on the raw material cost rise. Uh, Dabar, Parley, Britannia they are planning to rise their price hikes and this is according to sources what we are understanding. Uh, Parley expected to take a price hike of around 5 to 7 percent in the biscuit category. Chocolates also seems like they will be taking a price hike over there as well. And let's not forget uh, in cocoa prices, cacao prices, they have seen a sharp rise. So, you know, that does merit a bit increase in terms of the price uh, pricing action that one has to take. So, Parley, according to sources, 5 to 7 pri uh, percent price hike in the biscuit category. Britannia also expected to take a price hike uh, of around 4 to 5 percent is what we are understanding. And Dabur, a 4 to 5 percent price hike as well. So, keeping an eye out on this one, uh, concerns around inflation and rising prices, whether you look at palm oil prices, again seeing a bit of an uptick, wheat prices, sugar, uh, as well as cocoa, uh, cocoa prices is something that we are keeping an eye out on. But yes, as of now, according to sources, these three companies, what we are expecting, some bit of a price hike on these. Alright, so the FMCG sector, particularly these three companies will be important ones to watch out for in today's trade. But on that note, we'll slip into a very short break. More stock-specific updates on the other side when we return. Hi there, welcome back. Still watching Market Cafe on ET now. Thanks so much for still staying tuned. Let's take it across to my colleague Jinay now, who is joining us with a roundup of all the stocks that could be potential buzzers in today's trade, either on the back of their quarter one numbers or individual news flows. Jinay, good morning. Take us through that list. Well, yes, good morning. So, if we start out uh, with earnings, we have JV Chemicals, a good set of numbers, revenue up about 12% coming in at 1,004 crores, whereas net profit rose about 24%. Moving on, Azad Engineering, another good set, revenues up about 29%, whereas net profit saw a jump of over 121% coming in at 17 crores this quarter versus 7 crores, uh, crores uh, Y on Y basis. Moving on, Cochin Shipyard, in line side of numbers with expectations, revenue saw an uptake of about 62%, whereas EBITDA jumped about 125%. Moving on, Dream folks, uh, revenue up about 25%, uh, uh, net profit up 31%. Uh, well, on the other hand, uh, sale reported a weak set of numbers. The revenue saw a downtick about 1.5%, whereas net profit dipped about 61%, coming in at 82 crores versus 212 crores year on year basis. Also, Gateway is uh, disappointed with the set of numbers. The net profit uh, were down about 23%. 
whereas the beta was down about 11% year on year basis. Moving on, SGVN will be in focus. This company has uh, commissioned its 90 megawatt Omkareshwar floating solar project. This will be adding uh, company's revenue to about 64 crores uh, year yearly. Also, moving on, uh, Paramount Communications will be in focus. This company has approved uh, fundraising for up to 400 crores by the way of QIP. Okay, Janai, thank you so much uh, for that, keeping an eye out on that. But let's move on and talk about uh, Aishar Motors. That's also a stock that's going to be in focus. They reported their numbers yesterday. But what are the brokerages uh, saying this morning? How are they uh, analyzing the numbers? Let's go across to Gaurav. Gaurav, good morning. Well, yes. Aishan Motor reported good set of numbers when we talk about profitability that increased almost by 20%. We saw a bit of margin expansion of around 90 basis point. And on the back of this, we are getting mixed set of views from brokerages, although some brokerages have also went ahead and increased the target price. So first, let's talk about Goldman Sachs because they have now increased the target price for Aishan Motors to 5,600 rupees per share. What they believe is that higher export volumes will be supported by the new share of uh, new products which are launched by the company. Other than that, we have UBS who has actually maintained buy rating and a target price of 5,000. 820 rupees because what they believe is that Q1 was actually strong and management is also very confident with the outlook that they have. Other than that, we have JP Morgan who has actually maintained neutral rating but hiked the target price to 4,435 rupees because what they believe is that we will see some pickup in the CV business and the CV volumes coming ahead. Nuama has also maintained their hold rating and a target price of 4,600 rupees because what they are seeing is that the competitive intensity is increasing and that is why CV demand may see moderate growth ahead. And lastly, we also have Investec who has maintained sell rating but hiked the target price to 3,910 rupees because what they believe is that in this quarter we saw margins which owed to favorable product mix and at the same time soft commodity prices. What they believe is that from here on Royal Enfield's growth may slow down because of the increasing competitive intensity and with this they believe that Aishan Motors valuations are rich and that is why this remains as an alpha sell idea for the quarter from in Investec. So definitely watching out on Aishan Motors on the back of good set of numbers and a mixed set of views that are coming in from brokerages. For taking us through that, uh, Aisha Motors uh, to be in focus on the back of uh, earnings yesterday and brokerage notes today. But let's shift focus. One of the most highly anticipated IPOs, Ola Electric, is all set to drive into D Street today. My colleague Shristi is joining us with all the details you need to know about this IPO. Shristi. E2 wheeler major Ola Electric is all set to drive into the D Street and we have seen that the IPO did got a decent response. It was subscribed over four times in the total subscription data and even the retail participation was quite strong. Other than that, the QIP portion was also subscribed five and a half times. If we talk about the expectation, then though the market participants are expected, uh, expecting that it could be nearly muted uh, listing, but nevertheless, we try to bring the listing scenario in front of you and how the valuations will stack up because do remember that Ola Electric is still a loss-making company when it comes to their bottom line but the company has quite many growth triggers we'll talk about that but we have tried to get the picture with FY24 EV by sales parameter if the company does list at a 20% premium market cap comes over 40,000 crores and the valuation will stack up at 9.3 times and this is the scenario that 10% premium and 10% discount is the numbers are on your screen but how are the numbers comparable with the other two wheeler majors? Then in that comparison, you will see the Nola Electric at the at the upper band, upper price band, that is 76 rupees. The valuation will stack up at eight times, and that is actually at a very large premium versus the listed players from the likes of Bajaj Auto as well as TVS Motors. But why so? Because Ola Electric has been banging upon that they are the leader in the electric two wheeler segment. It's a more bit of a technology company. They are working on the battery space as well. And other than that, if we talk about some of the growth triggers for Ola, then they are very gung about the rise in the EV penetration. They could, they are expecting that their sales and the margins should expand in the times ahead. 15th of August is also likely to be quite exciting for Ola because the company will be launching its first electric bike. So all eyes on that as well. But apart from that, there are some bit of concerns as well in the street. Uh, a picture on your screen is the fame subsidy. 
uncertainty, the PLI push and the benefit that the company is getting for now. How sustainable is that? The EV plant delay, uh, there is a penalty risk if the company does not actually cater to the timelines and the guidelines and the sustainability of their market share, which is over 40% in the electric two-wheeler, is something that the market participants are not certain right now since the competition is increasing. So that's the growth triggers and the concerns for Ola Electric. But nevertheless, it's going to be an interesting listing and all eyes on that. Absolutely interesting listing, all eyes on that. But with that, we are absolutely out of time on this edition of Market Cafe. Nifty implied open, indicating a start of an uptick of 1%, 250 points higher for the Nifty 50. Implied open is what is it indicating. But it's a good buy from saying myself as well as the team who put this show together. Thanks for tuning in.